a grey autumn morning at Hillsborough and a okay, special this, this photo call. Oh. And again. The time is 8 o'clock oh. and Gareth, the kit manager, has already lost his cap. <laughs> And so, the go. moment for which Sheffield Wednesday has been waiting all that time. Off on the road to Europe again. This is travelling in style. The coach has all the mod cons, even Vinnie Jones on video. For the players, it was probably the most relaxed atmosphere possible. Some of them looking rather wistful. The first leg thrashing of Spore meant the tie was already in the bag. And as the official coach party headed for Manchester Airport, time to enjoy the experience of a trip abroad without the spectre of defeat disturbing the mind. Oh, and no. the verdict on the video? Am I one of the hard men on the video? Can I just say that Vinnie Jones' video is the worst video I've ever seen in my life. Thank you. As the team checked in, some were no doubt wondering what exotic locations would be stamped on their passports during the UFA Cup campaign. There's Danny there. Tell Jemson and, and Warhurst if he's not got a boarding card, he won't get through. Is there a delay or something in there? <laughs> hello, hello, hello. What's going on here, Chairman? <laughs> PC Richards at five foot nothing, much too small for a bobby, trying on that helmet, which was to be a gift to the president of Spora. The club was on a learning curve too. As Secretary Graham McCrell had put it, somewhere between planning a holiday and a trip to Wembley all rolled into one. The fact is, in the phone calls over now, weeks of planning, liaising, talking and communicating, about to be 600 miles behind in Sheffield. <laughs> Elementary, Dr. Watson. Billy says, while they're not looking, give me a <laughs> Would everything work out okay? Were the travel arrangements all right for the tour party and the fans? Well, it's too late. The hotel, the training facilities now, the pre match intelligence with local police. We're in the penthouse. We're in the penthouse right now. <laughs> Ah, who's a lucky boy then? See you later, Gordon. <laughs> the eve of the match, time to brush off the cobwebs of the plane journey with a very light training session. back in training after his appalling injury seemed eager to resume where he'd left off in a striking role the boss used the session to restore his confidence to head the ball again it had gone well training over back to the hotel for an early night with a little bit of Harks and Wilson banter along the way uh, Danny Wilson, Danny, how do you feel about the victory over Richie Barker's team? Well, I hope Mr. Barker could be too happy with his team performance, especially Mr. Anderson at the back there, like, you know? Uh, Mr. Anderson's and, uh, not happy with his performance. Happy with his performance, really, but, uh, but the forward line was extremely uh, important tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out, little and large. Luxembourg is the tiny, romantic Grand Duchy at the home of Europe. These days, it houses the European Commission and the European Parliament. The old Duke himself would probably admit the football teams aren't up to much, though. The directors, officials and club guests took in the sights while back at the team hotel, the manager was revealing his final lineup to the press. Defense. Williams plays in a wide position. And Paul Morris is going to play his first game after his uh, injury against Spora. Seems to have got a new air of confidence also about playing up front. Mm -hmm. You know, at first when I 
three weeks ago when I first mentioned it to him he thought it was a bit of a joke. He then played against Forrest and scored one. Followed it up with two against Spora. And it was quite interesting to me that, you know, when we had a fight aside yesterday, uh, he immediately went into a forward position. Julian Watts, the former Rotherham defender, and striker Michael Williams. Serious stuff for these lads, but for the eldest statesman, training seemed a little more light-hearted. Well, this is a technique that Nigel Wellington is doing here. He's stretching the elbow on the outside of the calf, OK, which we want to do at home. Let's not try to quit now at home, Barney. Let's give him ten. <laughs> Can I say, mate, touch me twice? This is what's called cheating. <laughs> don't do any running that you don't have to. Meanwhile, the Owls coach convoy was wheeling its way across the continent for the match. The prospect of hundreds of English fans invading Europe had given police kittens. The last time our national side played in Luxembourg, some fans had run riot. To be British at the border meant you had to be searched. But if the Owls fans gave the appearance of looking like caged animals, nothing was further from the truth. The players had travelled in comfort, they'd only had Vinnie Jones on video though. These fans had a match. The players' coach journey was much shorter, but the players did appear just as tense as the supporters. Inside the dressing room, those not in the starting lineup were naturally just a little more relaxed. Alan Smith, this is your life. <sighs> 43 years old, fit as a fiddle, pumps weights all day. Stay with me. Any knocks? No. <laughs> we'll keep it, we'll keep it to set. No, not have a do it. Can no. you get him off? Two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. Hey, no, three weeks, no. Tell you what, stay with me, come Switch back. Even worse you than when you here. started. Just, 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 Nigel Pearson, five. Graham Hyde, six. Danny Wilson, seven. Michael Williams, eight. Paul Warhurst, nine. Nigel Jemson, ten. Gordon Watson, eleven. Carlton Palmer, twelve. Chris Woods, goalkeeper. Chris Waddle, Chris <laughs> no, no, fourteen. Peter Shirley, Peter Shirley, fifteen. Nigel Wellington, sixteen. All present and correct. Outside, the first of the twenty-nine official coaches had arrived. Excellent trip. We set off at one o'clock uh, this morning from Sheffield. So, you, do you have any sleep? A bit. Yeah. Could you edit me, please? Because my wife thinks I've gone down for a bottle of milk to corner shop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with a bit of luck, she might never find out. Trevor Francis made eight changes from the first leg. There were call-ups for Watts and Williams, and as the manager pointed out, they'll always be able to look back and say they made their debuts in a European tie. Mark Bright had sent a good luck telegram too. He couldn't play, but whoever turns out for Wednesday gives absolutely everything. 8-1 from the first leg, soon to be 9-1 overall and a first-ever European goal for Gordon Watson. Already the trip seemed worthwhile. But Wednesday had got a warning at Hillsborough about the Brazilian striker Cruz, and he did to them what he'd done at Hillsborough. He scored. 
a defensive slip and a clear warning. They shouldn't have taken it easily, and at least they had the consolation of winning the match as well, and Paul Warhurst with a header. Poetic justice. Victory by two goals to one and 10-2 on aggregate. We've gone through 10-2, so, uh, you know, we're, we're satisfied. For the fans, the start of the long journey home. 1,400 had travelled by official coaches, 537 independently. No trouble, no arrests. The police couldn't believe it. The fans had done much to improve Britain's tarnished reputation abroad.